Everyone, welcome back. Hope you had a nice Easter break. So, I just thought I'd start by talking you through what this distance learning week is going to look like so you know what's coming rather than just having it day by day. So, for maths this week, we are asking you to follow on from the White Rose maths lesson. So, that is to be using the website you're using before. Um, if you go onto it using the link either we've tweeted out before or I'll tweet it out again, summer term week one, and there is a lesson for every day. Friday's lesson hasn't been produced yet, but it will be out by Friday. For English this week, we are asking you to use BBC Bite Size. Now, the BBC Bite Size and BBC iPlayer have come together to create four, I believe, 20 minute live lessons every day. Now, we're not asking you to do them all, but one of them will be English. And for this week, we want to see how good they are. So we want you to have a little go at them and see what they're like. If they're good, we'll carry on with them. If they're not, we'll do something different. So again, go to BBC Bite Size or BBC iPlayer and they're not there yet, but it says here daily lessons start on Monday. So in this section here will be all of the daily live lessons going up throughout the day. We're after you doing the English one, please. But of course, if you want to have a go at the others, then please do. They're doing a variety of subjects. In terms of other lessons this week, we're going to be looking at science. Over the next two weeks, we're going to be looking at a new topic on light, particularly the eye. So on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, you will have a YouTube science lesson. The one for today is going to be following on from this video. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, there'll be a Zoom live lesson, which will be looking at PSHE at 11.30. Just a little note on that. The live lessons, I will be sending out the code via parent mail to make sure that only you have access to it. So um, you'll have that sent with an ID on it and you'll also have a password attached to it. So we're just trying to make it a little bit more secure. We've not had any problems, but other schools have. So we're just trying to make sure that we don't come across any. Right, let's get started with science for today. So. Here, yeah, hopefully this will work. Right, so we're gonna be looking at how we see today using light. So where does light come from? Light seems to be all around us, but where does it come from? Can you name any sources of light? Well, the most obvious source of light, the natural source of light, is the sun. We've also got candle. Now, fire is a natural source of light, but obviously if we light a candle, we are producing that light. And then you've got light bulbs, which are an artificial source of light. That means man-made. You have sources, but then you've also got reflectors. Now, a reflector of light is something that allows light to bounce off of it. So, for example, the moon. The moon does not produce its own light. It merely reflects light coming from elsewhere. How does light travel from source? OK. Light's a type of energy known as electromagnetic radiation. Basically, it's a lot of photons which are little particles of energy. So imagine little tiny bits of energy all grouped together. Light travels as a wave, but unlike waves of water or sound waves, it does not need any medium to travel through. So that means that it doesn't have to go through anything. So for example, light from the sun goes through space. Space has no air, it is a vacuum, but light can still travel through it. Sound, on the other hand, would can't travel through it because it needs something to go through normally air. So if I show you as well the difference between a sound wave and a light wave, because as you can see here it says light waves travel out from a source of light in straight lines. So a light wave would travel, apologies for my lack of ruler, but a light wave would go in a straight line. A sound wave on the other hand is more of your traditional wave shape. Now you can see, by the amount of time it's taken me to draw it, apart from anything else, that a light wave will get to its target quicker than a sound wave, because a light wave is travelling straight. So light reaches you quicker than sound, which is why they say you see lightning before you hear the thunder. Okay. Rays of light travel from the light source and hit objects around us. The rays of light reflect or bounce off the object and then they travel into our eyes. So it goes from there to the object, from the object to the person. A lot of people think that light travels from the light source to us and then from us 
to the object. And that's a, quite a common mistake, but in fact it goes to the object and it reflects or bounces off of the object and then goes into our eyes. So, can you describe how you can see some objects right now? So, for example, I've got a photograph next to me on my right. The light source is above me, so it's going from the light source to the photograph, and then it's bouncing off of the photograph into my eye. So, your main task for today is can you draw it? So, you if you have colour pencils, great. If you don't, use what you've got. Can you draw an object, a light source, and a person? Something that is actually around you and show us how the light is travelling from one to the other. If you could take a photograph of it and send it to us, we do now have new class emails, which is Peru, if you're in Mrs. Waterman's class, or Germany, if you're in my class, and we will tweet out some of them, which would be really nice to see. We'll also share it on the website. As well, if you get a chance, go outside, have a look at your shadows. Does it make a difference when the sun is high in the sky or when the sun is low in the sky? What do you notice? Okay, everyone, so that is it for today. I'll be posting 